Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, please ask like and subscribe. Uh, this is part two of building the wiring harness. And I'll be honest, I filmed part one and part two yesterday and I've had some of the files become corrupted, etc. Not been usable. So I've managed to get part one together and I've missed a lot of things off part two. So I'm gonna sort of backtrack on myself so I make sure I cover everything. I said I'd go through it all very nice and slowly, make sure everyone can understand it. So uh, without further ado, I'll go through testing the lights with our uh, power supply. So here I've got the power supply. Uh, 230 mains been fed in and I can control the voltage. I've had it set up already to 12 volts. Uh, you can see I've got it here on the tail light and that red one is our tail light feed. So what we're going to do is turn this on. There I can see 12.3 volts come outside. That's our tail light. And then if I swap this over, let's see if I can, with one hand. Our brake light, that's a lot brighter. And you can do that, check all your bulbs, uh, your horn, your fan for your blower motor, all the things like that. I would test it with live voltage, make sure it's working. And then turn that off, and that's safe. Okay, so another thing I want to go over, that was supposed to be in the part one, but we'll do it now, is a test of switches. So, like I said, I recommend replacing all old switches, uh, but even the new switches you want to test them before you put them on. Uh, some are very difficult to get at, or can be. And uh, the way to do that is when I take our multimeter, put it on ohms, or you can get an ohm meter if you prefer. And then what I'm going to do is connect this up, and you can see there the resistance is dropping down. And if I close the switch, or open the switch, sorry, there we are, we have resistance, so that's going to be off, and then that's going to be our on position. Simple as that. I'll turn that off. So, carrying on from testing switches, I've got my old ignition switch here, I've replaced this on mine. But uh, we can use that to not only test this, but also if you're not sure which terminal goes to where, and we can just use uh, our own meter to test it. Uh, these switches, they have four positions, so all the way counterclockwise is off. Then I'm going to turn it, one click, that's the ignition on. Then I have a turn, that is heater plugs on, and then turn it more, and that is our starting basically. And then that's spring loaded back. You can see that from starting, the spring load works well. But on the heater plugs, uh, the spring isn't that strong. And that could lead to you accidentally leaving it on. But uh, looking at our terminals here then, we've got two big ones, 9.5mm spade terminals. One's got a smaller 6mm spade on it as well. So I'm going to say, or oh, I would guess that that would be your feed from the alternator but we can test it and another big one that's going to be for the glow plugs and then these two is going to be for ignition on and the other one is going to go down to the starter motor to actually start it so very similar to before get this on and I'm just going to go for that one just because it's the closest make sure I'm not shorting out my leads so again let's see if you can see this there we are. So insert my key, which has now been replaced. I turn it one click, so that's my ignition on, and I still have maximum resistance. So that there, I've turned it to uh, the glow plug on position. You see still is one, and then turn it all the way. And again, still is one, so this switch is bad. You can see there. That's ignition on, so yeah, there's a bad connection side there. Part of the reason I changed it as well, that and this weak spring. So that there is our ignition on. If you do get nothing, let's say that was nothing, then I could try this onto a different one. Then we could, might say, okay, maybe this is our feed and see when these two give nothing. They should give nothing. So we go back onto that. 
so this here I'm gonna guess is gonna go down to our starter motor so ignition on nothing heater plugs on nothing start yeah and it's a very bad example there we are just in the right position we get in no resistance for starting again bad connection inside the switch and part of the reason why we change it we test it and then finally a heater plugs here heater plugs on and again not really getting anything with that so this switch is dead but hopefully that makes sense on how to test it I think this is the only one that worked is the ignition on and even that one Here we are, I wasn't bitten down properly on that one. Okay, so that's all it for the bits that I got deleted that should have been in part one. So we've gone through testing of switches and testing of instruments, lights, things like that. Uh, very simple, you know, you're not gonna get more simple than that with uh, more complex electronics, it's a bit more into it, but yeah, hopefully everyone can manage that. So what I'll do next, I'll show you all the bits that I completed that should have been shown in part two, but hopefully it's not too much to follow along on your own build. So here's the back of the tub, right hand side. You can see I've got all my wires coming up here. And uh, these here for the reverse fog light, I've just stuck them through there for now. Got one for the number plate light. And uh, ideally these would be long enough that you can tuck them in and have all your connections inside this box accessible through here. Uh, mine currently are not uh, further on down the line I might change them but it's better to have these wires long enough so that they can be pushed back down but these just need the uh, Lucas terminals crimping on I'm going to be using them and that's how it's going to join up tow bar electric is coming out there and we'll just step underneath the vehicle so you can so that there's our harness coming out the chassis down to the tow bar there we got up onto the uh, offside and then we've got the other branch over there that's going on to the near side now looking up this is the other end of that wire so I've got all these crimped on ready to go into our connector that's gonna be a waterproof connector we've got that wire there going up onto our brake switch and uh, yeah, these you need the proper crimper tool to do them, but they're not too hard to do. I don't think I'll show you that. But uh, if anyone wants to, we can do that no problem. And then these here are the spade connector, female with a heat shrink on it, just so it bites the cable a bit more, gives it a bit more uh, protection from the elements as well. And then before I slide that on, I like to put a bit of Vaseline on all the connectors, and that's going to help prevent corrosion in the future, help them come off. And then finally, I'll show you the bulkhead so I've got this 10 terminal fuse box on here and that's been riv nutted in there held on by two bolts and then these they just slide out have a standard blade connect uh, blade fuses in there new ignition switch like I mentioned earlier I think and uh, yeah just I wire in a few things here the purple there, that's for the auxiliary lights inside. We've got uh, new wires for all our glow plugs. So standard colour should have been yellow with a brown tracer. I couldn't get that, so I've gone for brown with the yellow tracer. Do the same job. We've tested that for resistance, and they're all connected up well onto the balance resistor. And then I've got a big 9.5mm spade terminal there, but I want to see if I can get a fully insulated one, and then I will fit those on I can fit go down to the starter motor and the alternator and then once that's done I'm going to do as much of what I can here and then finally we'll do the lights or I'll put the w wings on and then I'll run the cables for the lights and you can see in here we're still this is the uh, dip switch that's going to go in the floor of this I've got a couple holes to drill uh, in here then, got the grommets in, got our speedo cable pulled through, 
and then on the wiper switch we've tested it that's working fine so i've kept the original cable for this i've just uh put some fleece tape around the cables to make it look a bit tidier and then that's ready to be connected up so there we are that's part two of the video done uh, unfortunately we'll show you what i have done rather than showing you as i'm doing it but hopefully it's been insightful and we'll get more into the main harness on the bulkhead in the next video if there's anything in specific you want to see or anything you think I've missed, just let me know in the comments and I can try and include that in the next videos or one of the videos of the series. Uh, but yeah, if you found it insightful, please like and subscribe. 